Convair F-102A interceptor, now operational in large numbers, has an excellent safety record. However, it is inevitable that circumstances can occur where uncontrolled landings are involved. In this eventuality, a well-trained rescue crew can be of utmost importance in aiding the pilot's departure from the aircraft. There are four major steps in the pilot rescue procedure, and they should be executed in this order. When performed rapidly with the necessary precautions, these steps can lead to a successful pilot rescue. The first step is to gain entry to the cockpit. Should the canopy mechanism remain undamaged, it may be raised manually. Entry can be accomplished in two additional ways. First, if there are no fuel vapors present, the canopy can be ejected. The emergency canopy removal lanyard is located under a small access door just forward of the wing leading edge on the left side of the aircraft. Push the button as marked and remove the panel. Grasp the handle and extend the lanyard using the wing as personal protection. Be certain that the surrounding area is clear of personnel. Watch the canopy, jerk the lanyard hard. The canopy normally lands near the tail of the airplane. If canopy ejection is unsuccessful, or if fuel vapors are present which could be ignited by the canopy ejection powder charge, then break the side windows to gain entry. An eight pound sledgehammer is the best tool for breaking through the plastic canopy windows. Hammers lighter than eight pounds may not penetrate at all. This is a four pound hammer. And this is what happens. It is essential to strike the first blows at the lower forward corner of the window, as close to the metal frame as possible. Striking elsewhere will delay initial fracture of the canopy window. Due to the nature of the material, striking even a short distance from the corner will prevent a speedy breakthrough. Using the correct procedure, 10 seconds is required to clear an opening large enough to remove the pilot. After the initial breakthrough, strike around the edge carefully, avoiding the pilot. The panel breaks into fairly large pieces when correctly struck. Clear away jagged edges which could hamper safe pilot removal. The second step is to disarm the ejection seat. In the normal ejection procedure, the pilot pulls up either the left or right armrest handle to eject the canopy. This exposes a trigger at the front of the armrest. A pull on either the left or right trigger will eject the seat. If this ejection seat is accidentally triggered, the results would be fatal for both pilot and rescuer. The safest disarming procedure is to sever the flexible tubing in the center of the seat behind the pilot's headrest. Once the tubing is severed, the ejection seat is completely disarmed. On the TF-102 trainer, both seats must be disarmed by severing both tubes. The third step is to remove the pilot's oxygen lead. It is imperative that the faceplate be removed before disconnecting other personal leads. Grasp the cord under the pilot's chin, pull down, then rotate the faceplate for removal. Should the suit pressure be removed before opening the faceplate and venting the helmet, the pilot's lungs can be ruptured. Only after the faceplate has been removed is it safe to disconnect other personal leads. The fourth step is to remove the pilot from the cockpit. Releasing the seat belt also releases the shoulder harness. Prevailing conditions should indicate advisability of removing the pilot alone 
or removing the pilot and the parachute using the parachute as a back support. Individual circumstances at a crash site may force deviations from any set procedure. However, the best rescue sequence for the F-102A is first, gain entry by ejecting the canopy or by breaking canopy side windows. Second, disarm the ejection seat by severing the tubing behind the pilot's headrest. Third, open the pilot's faceplate and disconnect personal leads. Fourth, remove the pilot carefully to avoid aggravating possible internal injuries. For latest information concerning revisions affecting F-102A pilot rescue procedures, contact the nearest Convair Field Service engineer.